The future is officially here. We talk with Minnesota Wild prospect and world champion Matt Boldy about what it felt like to win gold and his excitement about coming to the state of hockey. And we'll talk about what we're excited about this season, other than Kirill Kaprizov, of course. All of that and more in episode 56. Pay homage to the Met Center, Metrodome, Fogarty, or your favorite former Viking. What's up, Randy Moss Mooning? With any of Soda 6 Classics throwback tees. Looking to sip on a different flavor? Check out the McGolden Light Pond Hockey and Fishing Club merch line for that extra Minnesota flavor. Toss down that Bardone Beauty's code at checkout for free shipping on all purchases at sodastick.com. Hello, everybody. We back. Episode 56, happening now, presented by Soda Stick. Heard on Talk North. What's going on? Uh, Wild fans, are we still reeling? I mean, Kirill Kaprizov, which I think is a really great child name, Alexis. I don't know if you've given any thought about that. Let's uh, let's just address that, first of all. Let's address the rumors, yeah. So, (laughs) Alexis, explain what happened and why you are going to name your firstborn Kirill or Kaprizov or any variation of that name. Yeah, so um, we're heading to overtime, right? And I'm thinking, like, okay, I feel like i got to get a good tweet ready for overtime. This is on Thursday, Minnesota Wilds, first game against L.A. in L.A. I'm fired up that the Wild made it to overtime, right? They're down three to one. I'm like, all right, we made it to overtime. Whatever happens at this point happens. And I'm like, I should put out a tweet, you know, how, how storybook any would it be for Kaprizov to score the winner? But we're the Wild, and that storybook endings don't happen for the Wild usually. So I was like, <laughs> okay, maybe I should say, like, I'll name my dog after him because I am planning on getting a dog soon. So I was like, that would make sense. But I'm like, no, nah, it's funnier to say I'm going to name my kid after him. So I'm like, plus, it's probably not going to happen. The tweet will be funny for, like, 10 minutes, and then everyone will forget about this. Um, nope. Sure enough, Kaprizov <laughs> scores the game winner. <laughs> and, for those who didn't watch, it happened. <laughs> and literally – my Twitter blew up so fast. And the funniest thing is, is I thought that my Twitter was going to be popping because Felino scored the tying goal. And I'm like, yes. that's what is going to make my Twitter like excited tonight. Is Alexis Marcus was Felino the real Anklum. hero of that game. If we were, he was, if we're he was. welcome, I spoke yes. that into existence and now I have to name my firstborn <laughs> child after Kirill Kaprizov. So I apologize in advance to my future husband that we won't be having a conversation about this. It's already been decided. I mean, no matter what you do, even if you do name your kid like Henry or something like yeah. that, if I see that kid, I'm walking up to Kirill. it and calling Kirill. Uh-huh. So yeah, that, that poor child is going to be called, you know, if I don't follow through with this, people don't forget. Twitter never forgets. And I already nope. saw people on Twitter like, hold her to this, hold her to this. I'm you don't like, have a oh choice. my God. It'll be choice. saved. People have it screenshotted. <laughs> yep. yep. I, I do. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's what happened. So my, uh, the wild win in overtime, uh, Kirill Kaprizov scores his first NHL goal and my future child already has his name decided. So <laughs> you love her. to see it. You love to see it. You love the dramatics. I mean, we or could go her. on. <laughs> or her. That's the best part. <laughs> I saw yes. people commenting. They're like, I hope it's a girl. And I was like, hey, <laughs> I know. You could yeah. do a Capri. 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 So Jane Capri. Fingers commented Capri. on the post last night, and she's like, Capri is a really pretty girl's name. And I was like, true. <laughs> true. You know, we could we could figure something out, we'll I think. We'll work on it. Probably. We got a few years at least, yeah. And who knows what the cool names are by the time you have kids. Maybe Kirill is something that's hey, really popping off at that imagine time. Imagine the wild win a Stanley Cup with Kirill Kaprizov. That name is going to be trending. And yep. it's not yes. even going to be a joke yep. anymore. I might actually name my kid Kirill Kaprizov. So <laughs> who knows? <laughs> I'm so excited for this. <laughs> it's going to be pretty epic. I can't wait to unveil it on our Bar Down Beauties podcast as well. Bar Down uh, Beauties year five. Alexis is having yeah. a child and his name is Kirill. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, we could go on and on about Kirill Kaprizov, which we did on our YouTube channel. So be sure to go check that out. We had instant reacts from his NHL debut. Three points. You'd love to see it. Looks happy doing it. He got the uh, game helmet, the hydration helmet, they're calling it this year. Um, so congrats to him. Again, lots more on our YouTube channel. So be sure mm-hmm. to check that out. Alexis, kind of, we're recording this on a Friday. Friday, so we've only yep. seen one game. Um, there were some bumps in the road, literally bumps on the ice literally, in LA too. Like, I don't bumps. know what that was. That was trash was ice on, on was. the debut. <laughs> um, they play again, obviously Saturday and then mm-hmm. they, they switch series and yep. play Monday. But what are your first reactions to the little bit that you've seen from the wild so far and who else are you liking? Mm-hmm. Who are you wanting to see a little bit uh, more of? Yeah. So I missed most of the first period because I was um, still at work. So I caught, I missed the wild's first goal, but I caught um, like the last five minutes of the first period. And after that, um, so I, I heard that the first period was kind of rough for both teams, a bit of a slow start. Um, the so ice was I think there were like brutal. four shots on net yeah. between the two teams. It was brutal. Um, 
the ice was definitely bad and it was bad the whole game, but again, that goes for both teams. So it is what it is. You just got to learn to play with it. It's just unfortunate because you want the, you don't want the ice to be a factor in the game for either team. I want to see the puck moving cleanly. I want passes to be clean um, to the best that they can be. So that was a, a bit unfortunate. A couple of players that really stuck out to me in a good way. Um, Kaprizov, obviously. I really liked what Kevin Fiala did, even though he didn't score a goal. I thought he did a lot of good things when he had the puck on a stick. He was noticeable um, in a good way. Um, I thought Matt Dumba had a fantastic game, rang a few um, uh, close ones. He hit the pipe. Um, I thought he was shooting every time he got the puck, which I love to see that. Um, and then someone, an honorable mention for me would probably be Jordan Greenway. I thought he had a above average game. It wasn't his best game I've ever seen, but I thought he, he did some good things through his body around. Um, a couple people I was unimpressed with. Cam Talbot didn't impress me too much. Um, I didn't like what Marcus Johansson did last night. Um, he was Not also a strong debut for him at all. Unnoticeable. Mm -hmm. And Zach Preezy in the faceoff dot uh, needs to stop after game one. So hopefully by the time you guys are listening to this on Monday, I hope they change that for all Saturday. All those things have been amended. Everything's <laughs> yeah. much better. Hopefully yeah. they've already <laughs> fixed that. But those were a couple of the things that kind of stood out to me. Um, as, as uh, you know, some pros and cons of that first game. It's the first game. They're st trying to find their footing. It's a new format, divisional play. You know, you're, it's a little bit different. They've been off for a while now. So um, I didn't expect them to, to blow my mind or anything, but I thought they had a good first game. And I loved um, that they came back in the third and were able to not just get one point, but two. I mean, absolutely. I think out of those players you had mentioned, I would say Jordan Green far and away mm -hmm. impressed me. And, you know, I talked about it. We talked to him at camp and you could just tell he's carrying himself with a different demeanor. And again, going back to what Bill Guerin and coach Evison, they gave him a very strong message when they re-signed him during this off season saying, Hey, dude, you need to be better or yep. we're done with you. Like we're kind of, we're not going to wait around for you to develop. We're not going to wait around for you to mature. And I think he obviously took that very, very seriously, which is great. Cause again, he's still a young kid. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he did, he needed to grow up and I mean, he came in and he's looking, not that he was ever heavy by any means, but he just looks trimmed. He's still using his big body. He shattered the glass, according to Sarah McClellan of the Star Tribune, <laughs> shattered the glass with a check right away in that first period. Um, but I do, I'm really optimistic about him. I obviously love him playing with Marcus Felino and Jewel mm -hmm. Erickson on that line. I think the three of them had great chemistry toward the end of say, last I, season. I loved their line at the end yeah. of last season. So I love that they stuck with that. And hopefully Jordan Greenway's improved and a new style of play even make, makes that line even, even better than what it already was. Exactly. You know, we talked about Cam Talbot and and again, I've, I've said this off and on, he, he reminds me so much of Devin Dubnik yeah. and I, I kind of knew we were going to get a very similar goaltender out of him. And I think we saw a little bit of that last night. However, I will say there were oftentimes he was left swimming and there yes. really wasn't a lot that he could do. I think there were some letdowns by the defense. I mean, one goal goes off of Dumba skate. The other one goes off Carson Sco Susie skate. I mean, yep. again, this is just in this one first game of the NHL too. So we don't want to harp too much on. Mm -hmm. There's still a couple games in between yeah. when you guys are listening. <laughs> to this, but um, I expect him to get better. I know obviously they're not going to give up on him. I'm anxious to see if Capel gets in here, um, hopefully maybe Saturday or Monday against San Jose, just to see what he yeah. can bring and if he can change it. But all in all, um, yeah, they were kind of about what I expected, mm -hmm. I guess. You know, again, there are nine new faces, I think, on that yeah. Minnesota Wild team from last year. So keep that in mind too. They've had a week of training camp. I think Jared mm -hmm. Spurgeon had said it best when he spoke with media after camp saying, we haven't been able to get together off the ice at all either. Usually there's team bonding True, happening yeah. off of the ice and now they're literally limited to that time in practice and that's it. And then now that they're in the bubble, the interesting fact is they can't eat meals together. They can kind of gather a little bit, but it's not the same as it was in mm -hmm. Edmonton too. So I think, again, there's going to be a little bit of growing pains, a little bit of time that's needed for these guys to start to gel for that team chemistry to build. And then when that happens, you see success. Everybody knows that, right? It's, it's a yeah. team sport. It's the best team sport for a reason because you need everybody rocking on all cylinders. I'm eager to see if lines are changing up. What happens yeah. there? We saw Victor Rask, number Who one center, thought? baby. <laughs> so I will um, say that is something that I was kind of excited about as well that Jonas Brodin scores the first goal of the season for the wild Victor Rask gets goal number two two guys who you know Jonas Brodin is a tremendous defenseman he's not a big scorer though so if that's something that's going to consistently be happening for the wild where guys who who historically haven't put a ton of pucks in the back of the net for them are going to be guys you could rely on to maybe get you a goal um, to get you back in the game or whatever it may be that makes me optimistic because I don't know who had Jonas Brodin and Victor Rask scoring the first two <laughs> I don't goals think anybody season, did so. I think like the wild 
wild were scrambling. Usually they do that first goal and they were like, yeah. so nobody had this guy. We'll go for the <laughs> they, second They probably one. had to make a new graphic. They probably had one ready for like Capri saw Fiala and they're like, oh my God, it was Jonas Brody. Make a new graphic. Scratch that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then they announced Parisi scored as the second goal. Yeah. And so they were like, oh, perfect. And it's like, no, he didn't. Victor yeah. Rex did. <laughs> so uh, definitely a lot of fun. The Wilds return home on Friday, January 22nd. Very exciting. I will be there at the X. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's a different Yay. vibe, but it's definitely nice to see some of those familiar faces. Um, they're home for two weeks, Alexis, yeah. too. Do you think that's really going to help? I mean, obviously home ice advantage has always been a thing, right? There's no question, but usually that's because you have a crowd there and you know, there's that, do you think home ice is going to be as important this year? No, honestly, <laughs> I, I don't think so. I mean, sure. There's something about playing in your own rank, familiar ice. I mean, we talked about how bad the ice was in LA. There's going to be yes. those kind of advantages, right? The teams who aren't used to playing in those warmer climates consistently. So in, in that sense, there might be a bit of an advantage, but the typical home ice advantage that you think of is in regards to the crowd and the crowd's mm -hmm. reaction and the energy and the vibe of the building. That I mean, you have the piped in Sure. audio right which, which is that, hilarious that audience to watch. was fired up last night i will say <laughs> as that. they skated up and down the length of that <laughs> yeah. ice that audience was rocking <laughs> so i don't know i think that's going to be kind of i mean obviously i would much rather have fans in the stands um but it, it might be kind of fun to see and we we saw it obviously during the in the bubble for the playoffs and whatnot but just to see kind of like what happens when you remove that i mean are there going to be they talked about on the broadcast for the kings um how the wild have struggled at staples center recently well is that because of the fans or or what is it because of you take the fans out is that maybe going to change the way that they play so I don't know it's definitely going to be weird um, but there is something to say about just being comfortable in your own building your own dressing room I mean there's still that aspect so who knows there might be a little bit <laughs> of an advantage um, but I don't think it's going to be strong enough to necessarily do anything significant but I guess we'll see we'll yeah I mean I agree I don't know that it's going to be a huge obviously you can keep in your same routine you've got your right. locker your stall all of that but uh, we'll see if it makes a, a huge difference I'm just excited to to get back to work. To get back to I work. also appreciate like, while I miss the fans, I love being able to easily park and get down Kellogg and yeah. get into the facility. And it's, it's kind of nice. You know, I don't, I don't hate it. I miss you. I'm excited for you guys to get back, but also from a working aspect, I enjoy that. I don't have to leave two hours ahead of time in order yeah. to get into the, the river center parking ramp. So. Well, and uh, there should be less people in the press box, right? Cause they've cut down a little bit on kind of who's going to be there. So maybe yeah, a they only have line limited. for snacks. Yeah, in the press box. That's a the positive, snacks are right? kind of weird. It's a. It looks like a very <laughs> secured area. It's all very different. <laughs> I'll I'll be sure to have some more behind the scenes <laughs> stuff for you guys on my Instagram and on Bar Down Beauty stuff as well. So another shout out to that. Give Little that plug. a follow. Guess <laughs> what? Um, speaking of kind of schedules and people coming back, NWHL Alexis announced yes. their official schedule. The bubble. What uh, <laughs> What do you like and what do you see? And tell us a little bit more about what they've got going on. I mean, double headers and triple headers every day for two weeks is pretty exciting. I love that. I mean, there's, there's nothing more fun than kind of settling in and watching a sequence of games, whatever sport it is, right? It's fun to watch stuff back to back and to just be like, this is what I'm doing today. I'm watching sports. <laughs> so I love when they kind of pile them up like that. Um, and I, I think a lot of people expected that given that it's a condensed season and they're trying to get mm -hmm. all these games in in two weeks. Obviously, that's what makes the most sense. So during the week, they're doing double headers. And then on weekends, they're doing triple headers. So that's going to be really fun. Um, to to watch those games and, and kind of see how that all unfolds and um, I'm excited that we're uh, not too far away before the teams uh, report to Lake Placid so the NHL Ooh. season's underway the NWHL season isn't too far away either so it'll be fun to have both of those going on at the same time for a short amount of time um, it's too bad that the NWHL season couldn't be spread out more and we could enjoy it for a longer period of time but uh, they're doing what they can and I'm glad that we get some NWHL hockey so uh, mm -hmm. the the all of the games are going to be broadcasted on Twitch and then as um they mentioned um what was it probably a week and a half two weeks ago now the um last four games are going to be on um NBCSN. So that is awesome. Primetime yeah. TV for those games. That is going to be so, so cool. Um, Well-deserved. I am so excited to, to see that and kind of see the reaction of people as they tune into those games. So it's going to be a fun couple of weeks and I, I think it's going to be really fun to watch. So I'm looking forward to it. Yes. More hockey. Give more us all hockey. the hockey. <laughs> I'm very excited about it as well. We're looking forward to watching them. The Whitecaps 
claiming the cup, right? That's what we're, obviously. we're gunning well, for, obviously. It got cut short last season. They were ready to take on the, their uh, foe, the Boston Pride, and the, the Isabel Cup final was supposed to be held that Friday in March that everything got shut down. So the season got cut one game short, the most important game of them all. So I'm excited <laughs> to see what the Whitecaps do this season. I'm sure they're looking forward to trying to get back to that final and, and bring another cup home to Minnesota. Let's see it. Let's do it, ladies. I'm excited to watch. Speaking of Boston, transition, our (laughs) guest, Matt Bowlby, a Boston native, also playing for the Boston Eagles currently. You might know him better as the Minnesota Wild 12th overall (laughs) draft pick in the 2019 draft. As superstars of the World Junior Championships. Or a superstar (laughs) of the World Junior Championships for Team USA this year, claimed gold. So we're going to take a quick break and let Matt join us. We'll be right back. Hey guys, this is producer Fred. Gentlemen, I want to take a moment and talk about your hedges, about your rough, your fairway, your greens, your front lawn and backyard. Is it manicured enough to improve your overall curb appeal? Well, we want to introduce you to our new partner, Manscaped. Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. They just released the new and improved Lawn Mower 3.0 waterproof for shower trimming, a premium battery and charging station. Manscaped has you and your sensitive areas covered. Get 20% off and free shipping when you use code BUTES at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping when you use code BUTES, that's B-E-A-U-T-S at checkout. We're back, joining us now. Team USA World Junior Champion and a guy we cannot wait to see in a Minnesota Wild sweater, Mr. Matt Boldy. Matt, how are you? Good. How are you guys? We're good. We're excited to have you on because uh, you've uh, been somebody that people have had their eye on for a while, and then you have a pretty stellar performance at the World Junior Championships, and now everyone's even more excited. Does that? Uh, how does that make you feel? <laughs> no pressure at all, though, right? At all. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's awesome. Uh, obviously, it's a pretty good feeling knowing that everyone's excited, but uh, a little bit of ways to go. And just I'm excited myself to get there eventually and, and kind of get started there. So, what did what did you do with your gold medal here? I know it's your second because technically you won at U17 as well. But this is you know the World Junior Championship gold medal is is huge. What are you doing with that? How are you keeping it safe? Yeah, this one's a little bit cooler, but uh, <laughs> it's actually it's in my dorm room right now. So I'll, I'll bring it home once I get a chance to head there. But just hanging out right now. So, well, the World Junior Championships it's uh it's one of my favorite times of year just because I love going on social media and seeing all the guys who had played in it previously, rooting for you younger kids who are getting to play for the first time, um, cheering you on, hoping you can bring home a gold medal. Um, and you guys did just that. What is that like to see the support from some of those guys who are now playing in the NHL, um, who either played in the tournament or won a gold medal themselves? Does that get you pretty excited uh, to perform yourself? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's awesome hearing from those guys. Um, kind of just shows how how important and and all the great memories that those guys have from USA hockey and events like these and I mean it's pretty clear why with with going through it and stuff like that but having those guys reach out and and congratulate after a big win or stuff like that's awesome and yeah, once again it just shows the the people that are part of USA hockey and and how important it is to them. And, you know, you're, you're a Team USA guy through and through. You went to the National Team Development Program. You've, you've been at these international competitions. Tell us a little bit about where USA Hockey has taken you and your game internationally and how cool those experiences have been. Yeah, uh, USA Hockey has been huge for me, um, especially myself going there as a 16-year-old to the development program. Uh, I was kind of where I was able to take really big steps to the next level and and improve my game, bring it to, to somewhere where it wasn't before. Um, internationally, it's brought me obviously to numerous different countries and stuff like that with so many cool experiences and and all, all the things like that. But uh, a lot of it's just the connections I've made, the people I've met and, and the friends that I'm going to have forever. So was it hard leaving home? I mean, I'm sure it's harder on mom and dad than it might be on, <laughs> on you. But what was that like at 16 to, to pick up and leave Massachusetts mm. and go to uh, to Michigan? Yeah, it was definitely weird. Um, it's a 16 year old, you're obviously really young going into my junior year of high school, but um, it was tough, obviously. It was tough on my mom. Um, I'm definitely a mama's boy, but. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to your she... mom who follows me on Twitter now, by the way. I'm very excited. <laughs> so I will only say nice things about you, I promise. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, she's awesome, but it was uh, definitely hard on her, but 
she knew that it was kind of what, what we needed to do to get to the next level and the support she gave me was awesome so well you guys have a lot of you know pressure put on you at a young age to perform you you know you're you're playing at boston college you go play at the world juniors you've had other um, um travels playing as well and that's a lot of pressure for for these young guys uh, to perform and put on these shows and impress you know prospects and impress uh, their future teams and their future fans um and one of the best parts of that though is is winning and you guys did that at the world junior championships taking down that canada rival that somehow those two teams seem to find each other year and year um over and and you guys brought home the gold. Um, obviously, that was the best part of the World Junior Championships. Mm -hmm. But does anything else stand out um, from, from those games in those days? Yeah, um, just from the start of your question, it's obviously a lot of pressure. But, I mean, if you ask anyone, that's, that's the place you want to be. You want to be in those pressure moments and stuff like that. And, I mean, taking away from the tournament, other than the big victory, I think uh, just the group we got to do it with was awesome. Um, you don't really get that, that many chances to – to go play uh, on an international level with some of your best friends and stuff like that, which is, which is obviously huge. It's so fun, and it obviously always results in usually some positive outcomes. But being able to, to win it with the group of guys we had made it even more special. You know, I have to ask the question, was it a barrel or was it a trash can with uh, Canada <laughs> on there? You yeah. can be honest, right? We could talk about it. No, it was a barrel. Uh, I think uh, Co Coach explained it pretty well in his press conference after the game. It, it wasn't supposed to be disrespectful in any way, but it's more of a story and uh, thing that went by the whole tournament. So I know we got some uh, some ne <laughs> negative feedback from that. I was but. I was all in on the trash can, if you will, because I mean, <laughs> you know, ad admitted. I think even as fans, we see it, but as a player, is there a little bit of extra sweetness? Because we know that it's usually Team USA, especially the past couple of years, as USA Hockey has really surged as one of the top organizations in, in producing elite talent here on, on the hockey. Um, you know, is it a little bit sweeter to beat Canada for that gold, especially in Canada as well this year? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely – it's all, always sweet beating those guys. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, just that's the rivalry that's been made throughout this tournament and the Olympics and, and every international tournament that you play. Um, going into that tournament, if you asked anyone on our team or their team who they want to play in the championship, I would I would bet that at least 99% would say each other. Mm -hmm. um, that That's the team you want to play. And when it came down to that, we were all super excited about it and we were ready for the challenge. So. Talk a little bit about how close this group of players was that won gold and even coming before. I know I watched you at the All-American Prospects game when it was here in St. Paul. And that group of guys from the NTDP through all these international tournaments, you have some pretty star-studded rosters there, yourself included. Just tell me a little bit more about the players that you, you've gotten the chance to play with and all the opportunity that your group of, of players has really been afforded because of your skill and talent. Yeah, I think we've obviously had some unbelievable players and, and teams that uh, I've been a part of and been lucky to be a part of. But uh, the group we had was super close, whether we've played together at the development program or the kids that were part of the O2 development program or played with growing up and stuff like that. Um, I'd pl grown up playing against everyone that was on that team, basically. So going there and already having that bond with those guys makes it so much easier. Um, you're just kind of able to play for each other, uh, play for the guy next to you and stuff like that, which, which makes winning even better. Um, but being able to do it with those group of guys and guys that I call my best friends, it's, it's incredible. Well, uh, we, we mentioned to you before we started recording that uh, our audience is mainly Minnesotans, and that is um, uh, the team that drafted you 12th overall. Um, you know, you went into the World Junior Championships and had a, a pretty good uh, performance. I know you're going to be humble about it, but I know <laughs> Wild fans were pretty excited to see the way that you played. What is that like to kind of, you know, play on such that big stage, um, but not only that, but to have such a good performance and kind of get that recognition from people who are going to be cheering you on in the near future? Yeah, it definitely feels good uh, getting some recognition and stuff like that. Um, try to stay away from it as much as you can because <laughs> you never know when it's going to go the other way. But, uh, I mean, for me, I just kind of went in there with, with my head down and tried to do everything I could to help the team. And I kind of had it. I think everyone on our team really had a team first aspect before themselves first, which obviously led to success. But, uh, like I said, I just kind of went in and tried to do, do what I do best and, and play to play to the best of my ability, which ended up working out well. So 
with your head down and your body down because we got to talk about those block shots. That was epic. <laughs> I think, you know, the whole Twitter sphere erupted because you proved you were kind of this all around player. I mean, what are some aspects that you are excited to bring to whether it's your BC team, whether it's team USA, um, you know, toot your horn a little bit. What are some <laughs> things that Minnesota wild fans can look forward to that really are your elite status in your game? Yeah. Um, well, I wouldn't start with blocking shots. <laughs> that, uh, I'm super elite at, but <laughs> The one against Finland kind of just happened. My instincts took over, but I was happy to do it for the guys. Like I said, we're so close and playing for each other makes makes it so much more sweeter. But I think uh, the way I play is pretty, pretty offensive, really creative. Um, being able to use my body to make plays and protect the puck and make plays from there, which I think is really important, especially uh, at the next level. And needs to be able to to make plays and be creative, but do it in a strong way and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully, uh, get over there in Minnesota soon, but we'll see what happens. So how closely do you pay attention to the team now as it is? I mean, obviously you're at BC, you've got your own team to worry about. You're focused on being there, but do you keep an eye on anything as far as the future? I mean, they've got yourself included some very exciting young prospects that bring creativity, like you said, and some offense that the Minnesota wild here have desperately needed. <laughs> Yeah, uh, a little bit, not too much. I think uh, you're obviously watching the games and stuff like that, being being a part of the organization. And I was lucky enough to go to development camp after uh, the draft and and get to meet those guys that they have and great guys and great hockey players, which which is pretty exciting. But uh, you look a little bit, but you try not to look too much. Uh, like you said, I'm, I'm a little bit more focused now here at BC and, and trying to do something special here with the group we have. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we I'm sure wild fans and, and USA fans could listen to us chat, you know, world juniors with you this entire episode. Um, and I'm sure they'd love to hear about the future as well. But let's talk about the present a little bit. Uh, your time here at Boston College playing in your home state um, for for college hockey. What has that been like for you? It's been incredible. Uh, like you said, I, I grew up in Boston. Uh, I grew up coming to the BC games I was a fan my whole childhood. So when uh, the college route came around and, and they offered me, it was pretty hard to turn down. Uh, obviously an unbelievable program and it was kind of where I wanted to be. Um, being able to play here has been awesome. Obviously I uh, moved away from my junior and senior year of high school to Michigan. Being able to kind of come back and have my parents and, and family and friends be able to come to the games and support me and stuff like that. Obviously stinks this year with no fans, but uh, yeah. just being close to home and, and getting to see my mom and dad and, and brothers and sisters is awesome. Is it going to be an issue that Jordan Greenway is a Boston Terrier at all? Is that going to be a problem once you join the Minnesota Wild? Uh, I hope I hope not. Uh, pretty, pretty big guy, so yeah. Um, I think it'll be okay, though. Of course. You know, when did you first get on skates? I know your dad played college football at the University of Maine. Were you also a multi-sport athlete, and when did hockey kind of take over in your life? Uh, I think, uh, I was on rollerblades at like two, two and a half nice. then on skates at like three. So pretty early, but, uh, yeah, my, uh, my dad played football at Maine. So he was always, uh, he was always an athlete growing up and stuff like that. But, um, in terms of other sports, I, knew, I always knew hockey was what I wanted to do, but I grew up playing baseball, golf, lacrosse, kind of, kind of everything. Um, an older brother who, who I grew up with and, uh, kind of did everything under the sun together but uh I think I always knew that hockey was what I wanted to do it was always what I was best at and and uh what I loved the most so well, rollerblades think, first what's how did I feel that like that's happen a pretty easy transition though it right totally you can is, rollerblade yeah. you can skate that's yeah right yeah well it's definitely easier to rollerblade uh, <laughs> in terms of access we had a huge drive when I was younger so my dad threw some rollerblades on me and hoped for the best, and I guess it went well. So, <laughs> love it. No, no huge broken bones to to show for it anyway, which is probably good. For awesome, me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you, you know, when you were growing up, did you envision, you know, what was the uh, hockey route that you envisioned? Did you have, you know, plans to play college hockey, play in the NHL, play in the World Junior Championships, and and all of these other tournaments and whatnot that you've gotten to be a part of at such a young age? Um, did you envision a draft day for you and getting drafted by an NHL team, or did it all just kind of happen and you're just happy that it did? Uh, I think a little bit of both. I think kind of as you grow up, you start to realize those things a little bit more. Obviously, when, when I was younger, there wasn't much uh, thought into stuff like that, but the older you get, the more becomes realistic and that you start dreaming of moments like that, like playing in the world juniors and, and being drafted and stuff like that. But 
Um, you just try, try to kind of stay level-headed. I mean, growing up, my, my whole thing was just having fun, which is what my parents always preached. And I think that's the most important thing. So, I mean, it had to be pretty fun to hear your name called at the draft in the first round, especially when that was such a successful draft for all of your buddies, all of Team USA mm-hmm. and, and USA Hockey. Um, but go back to that moment in 2019. What was kind of going on through your head and when you were putting that jersey on and again to hear your name called? Uh, take us back then. Yeah, it was uh, it was stressful for sure. Um, <laughs> I actually did I did pretty good the whole morning. My uh, my parents were impressed and surprised with it, but uh, once uh, it started to get into the range where where there was a chance of me going to teams, it, it started getting a little nervous and a little stressful. And obviously, seeing the guys before me go uh, that I was such good friends with and played with is is unbelievable. And I was so happy for them. And then once my name was called, it. It was kind of a blur um, getting up to the stage and just saying thank you to everyone and finally throwing on the jersey. It was uh, it was awesome. Um, did you nudge your true. bud? Did you nudge your bud Cole Caulfield at all <laughs> as he walked by? Or were you just like, hey Cole, what's up? <laughs> Honestly, I don't. I don't even remember the walk from, uh, from the seats to the stage. So I wish I could tell you if I did, but no clue. Well, what are you, you know, once you get to that, that stage of being drafted, uh, you know, li- literally and metaphorically speaking, that stage of being drafted, um, what do you start thinking about as far as, you know, you specifically being drafted to the wild? What are you most looking forward to? Is there certain players on the team you're excited to play with? Is it just playing in Minnesota, a state that really embraces and loves hockey? Um, the chance at, you know, score, having a successful first season, winning the Stanley Cup, what excites you the most about, about playing with the Minnesota Wild? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a little bit of everything. Like you said, uh, there's so many things to look forward to. Um, being able to get drafted there was was unbelievable. Like you said, it's an unbelievable community who who loves hockey more than anything. Uh, they have some incredible incredible guys there right now already, and I'm sure there's going to be more coming coming through the program. Um, I think the coolest thing was after I got drafted, uh, just having guys like uh, on the team big name guys reaching out and saying congrats and, and stuff like that's uh, super important and kind of shows how, how class the organization is and stuff like that. But I definitely look forward to it all. And uh, I'm super excited uh, when that day finally comes. So pretty exciting to have Bill Guerin as your GM too, a former Boston <laughs> Bruin, a mass native guy, a USA guy. I mean, did you, is he one of the players that maybe you idolized growing up at all? Uh, definitely a little bit. I think that definitely helps, uh, having a guy who's kind of been through the same things that I have, um, knowing what I'm going through and someone you can look to for advice and stuff like that. But it was, uh, it's pretty cool being able to see him get, get the GM job. And obviously he's, uh, done a really good job so far. So I'm excited to get there. Yeah. Who did you idolize uh, growing up? Was there any players that you really tried to model your game after or anybody that you're maybe excited to play with or play against once you get into the NHL that you watched growing up? Yeah, I think, uh, I think Sidney Crosby was a big one for me um, growing up when I was little and in that stage where, where you idolize those guys the most. He was the, he was the young guy in the league who, who was the absolute stud and was doing all these highlight real plays and played so hard and stuff like that. Uh, it's pretty easy to look to him, but uh, I'd say he's, he was probably the guy I idolized the most. Yeah, he's all right, I guess, yeah. if you're into yeah, like not a bad goals, guy to look right? up to. Scored no. a big, big goal for <laughs> Team Canada once upon a time as well. So it's, a, yeah. it's easy to idolize him at any level, really. Uh, exactly. exactly. Well, yeah. before we let you go, we'll bring it back to BC again. What's the outlook for the season? I know freshman year's in the books. Now we're in, into our sophomore year and things, again, a little bit different with the world in the state that it is. But uh, how are the Eagles looking? Uh, we look really good. I think uh, we got a little bit ways to go with, with getting everything together, but I think every team does uh, the whole coronavirus stuff going on, but uh, we got a really good team. Um, four wild draft picks on the team, which which is pretty unheard of, but uh, we, we're we really strong, a really good offensive core, a really strong defensive core, and then we have Spencer Knight in that, which doesn't hurt. No. <laughs> um, yeah, not at all. But uh, we got some we got some high hopes for the season, and uh, we're all really looking forward to seeing what we can do with it. So I love how we ask you, you know, talk about your talented play. You're humble. Talk about how great your World Junior Championship was. You're humble. We ask about your college team, and the first thing you say is, "We're looking pretty great." That is a team first guy if I ever saw one. <laughs> 
I would agree. And final, you know, final piece of advice to any kids out there that might be listening or any parents. And I mean, cause your game is always growing. It's always developing, right? Even though you've been drafted, even though you have one gold now, even though you're playing division one, um, just any advice you might have to kids and parents that out there are out there wanting to make it to the NHL someday. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, it just starts with having fun. Um, that's, that's the biggest thing, all your success and, and getting better is going to come from having fun. The more fun it is, the more you're going to want to be better at it. Um, that's my biggest thing. It, it's always been still to this day. It's just go out there and have fun. Uh, it's a sport. It's something that, that you love and stuff like that. So that, that'd probably be my biggest, biggest piece of advice. I love it. Well, Matt Boldy, you certainly are a lot of fun to watch. You guys be sure to keep an eye on him out in Boston College. We look forward to the day that you come into St. Paul, come into the state of hockey. We will embrace you with open arms. So thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, guys. No problem. We're going to take another quick break. We'll be right back. Calling all buttes, our Bar Down Beauty's Teespring line has everything to help make you an official butte. Whether it's waking up with a hot cup of coffee from a Bar Down Beauty's mug, rocking our land of 10,000 buttes crew neck, or tossing an official logo on your water bottle, we want to make you an official part of our team. So support the buttes with the purchase. Go buy something right now. Love you guys. We back. Thanks again to Matt for joining us. What a great kid. Like, yeah. and I feel, I always feel bad saying kid, but he's a kid. He's 19 <laughs> years old and, but just so humble. And Alexis, you had kept saying that, like he's, yeah. he wanted to pass off all of that. But I think that's why that team is so successful. Like I said, I've watched him for a couple of years since he's been yeah. with the NTDP and those guys really have each other's back. I mean, they've, they're, they're all so good that I almost feel like they have to rely on just the team's yeah. success. Like each of them has really strong individual skills. Trevor Zegras, mm-hmm. uh, Jack Hughes, Hughes, mm-hmm. Matt Boldy, Cole Caulfield. I mean, you go, the list goes on and on, but it's there. That team first aspect is, is so powerful in that group of guys. Yeah. It's funny you say kid. Cause I was talking to my dad about it, about how we interviewed him and stuff. And I was like, yeah, nice kid. He's like, you're calling him a kid. And I'm like, well, I'm 25 and he's 19. So <laughs> yeah. if I'm six years older than him, I think I can classify him as a kid. I think you point. get out of the kid <laughs> stage once you hit 20. Like I'll my give dad you said that. 21. He said 21. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I think that buy uh, own beer then. You yeah. Can, what, uh, you're, yeah. If you're in your teens, you're still a kid. You're still a kid, <laughs> but yeah, a tremendous person. It was really fun to get to chat with him, especially so soon after such a momentous part of his hockey career. And Really, really excited to watch him in a wild jersey someday, as I know a lot of wild fans are. Heck yeah. But hey, keep getting that education, Matt. I will say mm-hmm. there's no rush. Don't rush and your have development. Fun playing college hockey yes, as well. Yeah. Enjoy it. So, <laughs> um, our up for debate this week actually Ooh, did, let not me announce pop, it this week. did not pop off. All right, Alexis, you announce it. What was our up for okay, debate? Okay, so normally Jesse's the one stirring the pot, but I was the one stirring <laughs> the pot this week. So, our up for <laughs> debate was, and yeah, you're right, it didn't get people as no. angry as I thought. There was <laughs> there was some people kind of saying, like, wait a second, where's this? person and where's this person um but I think people were just focused on the wild opener they didn't want to be angry this week so maybe that was the problem (laughs) but our up for debate this week was biggest flop in wild history or biggest disappointment in wild history and our three choices uh were Benoit Pouliot uh James Shepard and Colton Gillies um and this one I mean so to be fair I think we wanted to pick people who played for the wild at least and didn't pan out a lot of people were commenting like what about you know AJ, AJ Thielen, Thielen and yeah. and and Kuma and you know guys like that who played either no games in the NHL or just one so and yes. again draft picks like it draft wasn't picks. somebody that yep. came here or we traded for and it didn't work yep. out like I don't that's not what it was it was it was tough but I thought we picked yes. some solid players yeah I wanted to pick people who like who haunts your nightmares who did you watch play and you were like why did you not do better? And I think that's kind of what we were going for. So yes, some of those people that people were mentioning were high draft picks of the wild and just never played in the NHL, which technically I would consider that a biggest flop. Um, but we wanted to go a slightly different route with it. So yeah, those were our three choices. So since I made the decision this week, Jesse, I'll give you the floor first. Who was your biggest flop? Dude, James Shepard. I don't <laughs> think there was any question. And, and I will preface this. I was so excited about James Shepard. Again, that's when I was yeah. really kind of tuning into, I was always a college hockey fan I didn't really get into the wild until later down the road and and James Shepard and part of it I thought he was kind of cute I'll be very transparent (laughs) there I thought he was kind of a cute dude but I was so excited like you heard all of the James Shepard James Mm -hmm. Shepard he's going to be absolutely phenomenal like a whole big let me do it again Fred um, <laughs> put that on, put on that on the audio board. When yeah, we get it, I mean, just <laughs> nothing. I mean, nothing. I'm curious to where he's even at. You know, what I might while you tell me yours, I'm gonna Google where James Shepard 
is even at. So I also picked James Shepard only because, like you said, I think there was so much hype around him and he just didn't pan out. Like Benoit Pouliot was a higher pick, um, mm-hmm. but I think there was more excitement around James Shepard. Um, and he just like he never he just wasn't ever exciting. He only ended up scoring 11 goals in the NHL over the mm-hmm. course of how many seasons, three seasons he was in the NHL and he yeah, was with injury three different prone. Teams. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just like, he, he didn't ever end up doing anything that was exciting. And I remember, I mean, that was, you know, when, when he was playing for the wild, I remember watching him and being so mad at him. I'm like, why are you not doing more? Why did you just make that mistake? Like I, I vividly remember having days where I was so mad at James Shepard. So yes. that's why I picked him as well. Um, but I agree. I mean, someone like AJ Thielen, I mean, he was 12th overall pick in 2004. Uh, he played one game in the NHL. Tyler Kuma never played a game in the NHL. Right. So those Which, guys, I mean, that's a, that's a bust, I guess. Right. Cause yeah. they weren't good enough to break into the NHL after being, selected. Um, and I will say Benoit Pouliot, um, although his time with the wild wasn't super successful, he was part of the trade that got his Guillaume La Tendresse, which yes. I loved Guillaume La Tendresse when he played for the wild. He was a lot of fun to watch. Um, I think that that's a positive that kind of came out of that. So if you want to look at the bigger picture, that's kind of why I didn't consider Benoit Pouliot because I'm like, well, in the end, we kind of got something positive from that. Um, and so, yeah, I, I picked James Shepard as well, but it was, it was really sad kind of looking through these names and thinking, ah, what could have been? The Wild had a stretch from 2004 to 2008 where they had like (laughs) draft picks in the top 10 or 12 and none of them panned out. And I'm like, how sad is that? You make the, the semi, the conference finals in 2003, you have a great, you know, finish the season. You unfortunately can't get to the Stanley cup final, but for a young team, it's impressive. And then you go five consecutive years where you just flop on, on draft Mm -hmm. day. And that, I mean, is just maddening. And so it was, it was, it was a sad one to do research on because I'm just like oh gosh this is bringing up so many bad memories but uh yeah I'll bring it current (laughs) Philip Johansson uh, 2018 I mean I don't know if it's fair to call him a flop yet but I don't think it's panning out I mean that was a first round pick the first first round pick they had had since 2016 and went number 24 overall and he was another guy that I maybe thought was like eh we could consider that one a little bit too, but I think our friend all, Joe Bully uh, mentioned Philip Johansson. Somebody commented him, and I know you had made a, an argument to put him in that original graphic um, for the three choices, and I almost did, but the same reason you just mentioned is why I avoided it. I'm like, well, he's pretty recent. Like, who knows what could happen? Sure, at this point, something better probably should have happened, but <laughs> I feel like it's too early to call him a flop yet, so I was like, I'll leave that one off for now. Maybe yes. we'll come back to that in five years Fair. and see see if he's in the running for that. So We're hopeful. We're always <laughs> cheering for the wild prospects so that'll do it for this week's episode this week's up for debate appreciate you guys tuning in again shout out to sodastick.com shout out to manscaped shout out to talk north and all of you guys a huge shout out to as well don't forget to subscribe rate share with your friends keep the buttes rocking and rolling check out our teespring store toss a purchase down into uh into that don't chirp duluth merchandise Ten thousand mm-hmm. buttes merchandise mm-hmm. or just regular logos whatever whatever i love how the you. shout outs get longer as the longer we do this like that's a yes. good sign it's like we got more people to thank more people Let's to go. shout out love it yeah yeah exactly so appreciate you all have a great rest of your week we'll be back next week have a good one Near, 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 near